Imagine you're in a super safe airplane built for reliability with all kinds of safety features and incorporating a built-in airframe parachute to let the airplane down safely if something fails, something bad. Well, you're just about good for any situation, right? Well, stick with us on Flywires. We're going to look at that situation gone horribly wrong. Hi, I'm Scott Purdue, and today on Flywire, we're going to look at the sequence of events that confronted the pilot of uh, November 64 Sierra Romeo, a 2006 SR-22 GTS. Four Sierra Romeo took off from Tucson, Arizona, headed northwest towards Phoenix, Arizona. On a normal, everyday cross-country flight, and then this airplane experienced an engine failure, climbing at 640 feet per minute through 9,100 feet, and he was making about 133 knots across the ground. Flying a Cirrus, which is equipped with a CAPS a Cirrus airframe parachute system, an engine failure like this is almost a non-event, right? Well, after all, it has, had a, it has a parachute to get out of situations like this, and other people have done this quite a lot, had this happen to them. So, uh, no big deal. For the pilot of Force C Romeo, life, or more specifically, Murphy got in the way of uh, his best laid plans. Cirrus was founded by a couple of brothers, Alan and Dale Kottmeyer, to build a fast, safe, modern airplane. They had been doing kick building, experimental airplanes, etc. And their new ideas figured that they could take a composite airplane that could meet or exceed the performance of any other certified GE airplane and make it extra safe to boot. Alan uh, had lived through a mid-air collision in 1985 and he was determined to find another way and he figured he'd found it in the Ballistic Recovery Systems BRS whole airframe parachute. Scaling it up from a Cessna 150 test bed to fit a four-seat composite airplane was a challenge. Since they were uh, designing it from the ground up, they incorporated the system into the skin of the very aircraft and frankly you can't even tell that it's installed. Lots of testing ensued to make sure it worked and they got all the bugs out of, it, out of the system pretty much. Over 45 drop tests were performed from a, a C-123 cargo airplane up to 175 knots. Ground impact, uh, chute extension, inflation issues, all those things were worked out. The rocket they settled on would pull the chute out to full extension in, tw in two seconds. They even did in-flight tests with deployments from stalls and spins up to 133 knots for the 22. Interestingly enough, the chute was cut away and the test pilot flew the airplane out to a landing so they could reuse the airframe without rebuilding it. The cuff wing that the Cirrus uses, this is a real interesting portion here, has uh, the outboard section at a lower angle of attack, which improves, improves slow flight and stall handling. The design feature has the potential of increasing the spin resistance of the airplane. And beyond this, Cirrus certified the airplane in the U.S. without doing a Part 23 spin recovery test program. They asked for and were granted an ELOS, an equivalent level of safety, with the caps and the outboard cuff wing. If the airplane departs controlled flight, the book answer is to pull the chute. The interesting thing is when Cirrus tried to get the airplane approved in Europe, the EASA required a full-up spin test program in addition to the ELOS, and Cirrus passed the spin tests. I don't know all the details here, and I haven't flown in a Europe an airplane, a Cirrus in Europe, so I don't know if the POH of the placards have changed. US airplanes still, USA airplanes still rely on the chute for spin recovery. One thing you can say about Cirrus is the marketing is brilliant. They use the chute to the max extent possible and arguably are the most successful GA manufacturer building airplanes for quite a while. A brand new design with as many safety features as they could pack in it. The trouble is that initially the safety record wasn't better and the airplane got a bit of a rocky review on as to safety. And in 2011, as about uh, 10, 12 years, there were 16 fatal accidents in Cirrus airplanes, and you know that's a lot. Cirrus Owners and Pilots Association, COPA, got serious, and in 2012, in partnership with the factory, developed a new training program. Eventually, the factory pulled in new owner Cirrus training in-house, in and they developed a training program for pilots buying used airplanes as well. One of the things they were concentrated on was resorting to the chute for more situations, and the fatal accident statistics have declined significantly for the airframe. Most people seem to credit removing the stigma of using the CAP system with that trend. I would hazard a guess that a significant part of that decline is also due to more specific focused training, but that's just me. 
So the net result is that the safety promise of the Cirrus is now being felt across the fleet. Airframe chutes are not a bad thing, and it saves, if it saves lives, it one doesn't, it pull and using one doesn't make you a bad pilot either. The interesting thing is, is that when a safety program or technology is adopted in any line of human endeavor, there is a phenomena that tends to make itself felt, and that is called risk homeostasis. In other words, when a safety initiative has some success and lowers the accident rate, the human side of the equation takes a hold and other risky behavior is increased in other areas. For the Cirrus, that could mean more flying over an hospital train at night and more severe weather conditions. The CAPS, in my opinion, is responsible for some of that effect for the Cirrus airframe. There are limitations to the CAPS. First, you have to be in the envelope, pretty important. There's, there is a V-speed they call a VPD, the maximum demonstrated deployment speed, 133 knots for the SR-22 through Gen 4, and then 140 knots for Gen 5 and after, bigger shoot, et cetera. The altitude envelope for straight and level flight is 400 AGL for, for Gen 5 plus, and it's 561 AGL. At the spin, it's 920 feet and 1021 for Gen 5 Plus. There have been instances of CAPS deployment of VPD, above VPD, one out of Reno in particular in bad, turbulent, icy weather attempted to pull the chute around 270 knots and the airplane was shredded. But there have been zero fatalities if CAPS is deployed within parameters, and that's good news. My focus is on the impact of the safety feature and how, what ha how it happened on this, how it impacted this accident. All in all, the accident took 20 minutes from takeoff to landing. The good thing is that both occupants walked away from the accident. That's a really good thing, but let's dig into it a little bit deeper. 13 minutes after takeoff, 4 c Romeo was climbing through 9100 and experienced an engine, about 13 minutes, an engine failure on the heading of 302. The pilot reported experienced heavy vibrations and with moments, complete loss of engine power. In less than 20 seconds, the pilot had dropped the nose and began to turn toward Marana, Marana Regional Airport, which is just over 10 miles away. Marana is about a 2,000 foot ele elevation and rolling out roughly on a heading of 075, it kind of varied a little bit, towards a AVQ. The airplane was descending from 12 to 1500 and spiking up to 1600 or so feet per minute. Just over three miles later, passing through 5,000 feet, which is 3,000 above the ground, the pilot decides he can't make Marana and reports that he tried to deploy the chute. It didn't work. Then he turns north, and that happened to turn toward a private glider port, and in less than two minutes, uh, he couldn't make it, and he landed on Pump Station Road in Avra Valley, a simple dirt road heading along the same track as the Cirrus. Extrapolating the air time with about 7,000 foot of air to work with, one would think that the airplane would be airborne for just over five minutes completely, and in the whole evolution, in the end, it actually ended up uh, just over five minutes. Good news and bad news. The bad news is the chute didn't work in rough terrain. Good news is the pilot didn't let that cause him to freeze. He flew the airplane and landed successfully, and everyone walked away. No hit him on, on him for that. Landing on a road could have turned out better, but the pilot accomplished, uh, and the airplane accomplished their main job of getting everyone on the ground safely and letting them survive. Bad news, in my opinion, is he fixated on making it to a nice big airport. Marana has two runways and people, and then when he figured out that wouldn't work, he attempted to pull the chute. The issue, as I see it, is that he squandered his energy budget in an impossible attempt to make an airport. Even after the chute fi failed, he turned towards another airport, that glider airport, and settled for a landing on the road. I highlight this because the chute made him engage in risky behavior. The attempted pull was over very rough terrain, no people, few roads. Uh, it probably wouldn't have turned out super well. I'm also, I am not suggesting that he disregard the chute. What I am saying is that in this instance, making AVQ was nearly impossible. And if he had trained for this situation or thought it through, he would have known it was beyond his reach. Okay, think of it this way. In a highly wing-loaded wing airplane like a Bonanza, high key over the airport, over the airport is 2,500 AGL. Cirrus suggests that you be at 2,000 AGL. So instead of having roughly 5,700 feet to play with, he had around 3,700 feet, or roughly just over two minutes, if he was gonna find a spot to land on. And a min at a minute, if he was gonna find a suitable spot to pull the chute. The factory strongly recommends that you pull the chute in a case like this. And that's fine. Find a good spot for it. I think it's pretty, fun, pretty common that most folks don't take into account having to move, maneuver to land at an engine out. 
and how much altitude that costs at the end of an engine out scenario. The glide rings for four flight or Garmin Pilot show where you will impact the ground. And frankly, I think that's a bit misleading. Maybe it's just me, but I think far too many Cirrus pilots think that the shoot is a get out of jail free card. If plan A, like going to Mariana, Marana, goes to hell, then the shoot will get you out of trouble. As we can see, you have to have a plan B and even a plan C. The shoot shouldn't prevent you from doing that pilot shit. Sorry, YouTube. The priority, whether you are flying a Cirrus with a shoot or a Bonanza without one, is that you have to think about the end game. Even better is thinking about this stuff before you really need it. In other words, on the ground. I think looking for a suitable spot and using your airtime to get there and pull the chute is a better plan A than squandering your energy budget looking for an airport and going straight there. All too often, there's no airport that will work. In the desert, where fields have big road, big rocks, roads don't look so bad to me. The trick is to get there with enough energy to affect your outcome. My nickel is to fly the airplane as long as you can, as far into the crash as you can, thank you Bob Hoover, and use your energy budget wisely. I'm not knocking the pilot of the Cirrus, or even Cirrus pilots in general. Well, perhaps with the exception of Brian Turner, if he's watching. Just kidding, friend. I think, uh, though, think through the plan, though. Don't stop at full extension of the chute handle. By the way, if you're curious why this chute did not deploy on this Cirrus, Cirrus a mandatory service build was just issued, literally, like two days ago, as I'm filming this for serial numbers right around this accident airplane. Seems like there was a problem with the rocket igniter assembly and the service bullet directs inspection and replacement. Sounds like a bad batch from the manu manufacturer. I hope you like the, and if you have one of those serials, pay attention. I hope you liked the video, and if you did, hit like and subscribe. It looks like this here. Uh, and also I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters here. Without you guys doing these videos, it would be much harder. If you'd like to support the channel, I'll leave a link below for the Flywire Patreon page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Flywire.